Park Derby is the location for the testimonial match for Rangers and Derby legend Ted McMinn. And can you believe 10,000 have travelled from Glasgow for this huge match? And it's legends who feature from both sides. Derby call upon Peter Shilton, Gary Rowett, Igor Stimich, Mark Wright, Stuart Pearce, Stefano Iranio, Gary Micklewhite, Paul Goddard, Dean Saunders, Nigel Clough and Gordon Cowns. For Rangers, well, Andy Gorham, Dave McKinnon, Mark Hatley, Nigel Spackman, Alistair McCoist, MBE, Ray Wilkins, Stuart McCall, Ian Ferguson from Australia, Gordon Jury, Derek McInnes and a special guest appearance from Chris Waddle, the Spurs and Newcastle legend. Still big names keep coming on the bench today. We've got David Dodds, we've got Tommy Johnston, previously of Celtic, and of course Chris Woods, now goalkeeping coach at Everton. Also possibly a cameo appearance for Kevin McMinn Jr. We're about to get underway. It's a wonderful atmosphere at Pride Park Derby. A great day for Ted McMinn. He's not at it easy, has he? But look at just the smile on his face today. The two clubs that he serves so well, we wish him full and a happy retirement. His rehabilitation, after having his right leg amputated below the knee, is going particularly well. It says it all about this man that both sides prepare to send out such quality sides. And it's Derby who get the match underway. He's getting a feel of the ball, Mark Wright. Well, if anyone knows Ted McMinn well, it certainly is Mark Wright. Igor Stimich, what a great pass to the ball, the Croat tries to thread it through, as you would imagine the game not quite being played at a furious pace. Rangers have some defending to do, the layoff from Nigel Clough, cut back, oh just standing in ceremony there of course, offside surely, a ah, fine save by the goalkeeper anyway, I do him a, give me Sunday title, the goalkeeper, of course we're making reference to the one, the only, Andy Gorham Spackman. Left a bit stranded. Mark Hatley at centre back also looking for the offside decision. And there's a pair of legends as well. Walter Smith Archie Knox. Happy to see the goalie. Such fine form. Good early touch. Dave McKinnon. Well, he's caught in his tracks there as Derby win it back inside the centre circle. Stuart McCall makes it simple. First touch for Mr. McCoyst. Needs a bit of movement. Derek McKinnis provides it. There's one two. He's in the box. Tries to chip the goalkeeper. Well, Peter Shilton, cat-like, athletic, the spring of a 20-year-old, makes a fine save from Ali McCoyst. Well, Peter Shilton off his line, McCoyst alert to the opportunities. Bit of a shake of the hands, two legends, one Scottish, one English. I'll try and add up how many caps they may have between them before half-time. Now, again, Derby trying to get the passing game going. Stuart Pearce, now manager of Manchester City. Plays it to the flank, wants the return. Policed by Stuart McCall. Good delivery too, there's a headed chance and it's just over the top. A fine effort. He certainly knows where the goals are. Goddard with the header. Not far away at all at the moment. It certainly is a bit even Stevens. Well, Chris Waddle, you couldn't mistake that gate. Finds McCoy, can't work it out from under his feet. Good defending, Stuart Pearce. Did I detect a bit of afters? Well, a younger McCoy would certainly have taken a first touch. It was perhaps that bit better than this occasion. Dean Saunders now for Derby County. To Micklewhite, forward ball, meant for Goddard. Stopped these tracks though, gets the break of the ball. Again, Rangers have to defend. Ian Ferguson, Nigel Spackman combine. Iranio now look to delivery from the right hand side, near post ball, and they go around. Excellent pair of hands, the ball may well have been out of play prior to it. Takes no chances. Good clean catch from the goalie. Ted McMinn enjoying it, as is Tommy Johnston. He didn't enjoy many matches against Rangers, Mr. Johnston, though, if memory serves me correct. Dave McKinnon just tries to close down Derby's engine room at the moment. Threaded ball. There's a chance here. Goalkeeper again, great positioning to deny. Nigel Clough, there's a cut back again for Goddard, just shut down the possession. And Andy Gorham just happy. No pace on the ball, takes a touch. The Rangers fans enjoying this one so far. Now Derek McInnes playing SPL football just last season for Dundee United indeed. Looks as if he's on his move and he's on his move just now to try and get the through ball. Shelton just gathers that, suggestions outside the 18 yard box. 
Walter Smith Archinox probably quite happy with the start that this Rangers legend side have made. Now Pierce inside again, shut down by Mark Hatley. Ray Wilkins just pokes the ball forward to McCoist. Pushes it to the flank. Need a good delivery here. To the back stick. Gordon Jury underneath it, my goodness. Well, Jukebox should have opened the scoring there. He timed his run well, just fractionally underneath the delivery from McCoist. Couldn't get the header on target. Chris Waddle made the decoy run, and Gordon Jury very unfortunate not to open the scoring here today. Well, Gordon Jury's son now involved at Murray Park. We hope he has as an illustrious career as his father did in a blue shirt. But again, Rangers in a defending mode. As Pierce comes forward, he tries to link up there with Saunders. Ian Ferguson doesn't dive in. Delivery from Pierce. Well headed clear by Rangers. Good touch from Dave McKinnon. No call. Although, can you believe he manages to find McCoist in the flank? I think he's lurking there from the last attack. Ray Wilkins just holds it up and just lofts the ball forward from McCoist. Thinks about the big switch. Finds the ever willing Derek McInnes. This is better from Rangers. Chris Waddle now a chance to, to drive at Gary Rowett. Thinks about a shot from distance. That's a cheeky effort from Chrissy Waddle. Not far away at all. Wonderfully talented left peg. Start for Newcastle, Tottenham, and of course Marseille over in France. Peter Shelton's had enough. Wonderful talent as well. 1,005 league appearances in total. The Rangers fans acknowledge Peter Shelton. He wouldn't have done that when he was playing for his country. But he picked up 125 caps. His replacement, Derby County regular. Lee Camps now between the sticks for Ted McMinn's Derby 11. McInnes with a, a good drag back there. Keeps possession for Rangers. Dave McKinnon's an option on the flank. Ian Ferguson just tucks in Stuart McCall is still at lively as well McKinnon and McCall combine inside to McCoyst again Rangers passing it very very freely at the moment with accuracy as well as the nine in a row legends combine Jury with a delivery into the danger area Waddle just looking for the header and Mark Wright well positioned to cut off the supply the Rangers work the ball well from back to front and certainly earned the corner kick that Chris Waddle will go across to take and Rangers fans today, having journeyed down to Derby very much in good voice. So, can Waddle conjure up a good delivery to get us the first goal? It's in the danger area, the goalkeeper Lee Camps comes, has a fist on it, inventive header, and that's the opener! Well done Dave McKinnon, saw the opportunity with the goalkeeper stranded, knocked the ball back into the danger area, and jukebox jury diving full length, meets the ball plumb on the forehead and knocks it behind the defenders on the goal line it's Derby County nil Rangers 1 Gordon Dewey happy with that one was it really all those years ago he knocks the hat trick in the Scottish Cup final well the Ibrox legends and the legions who've travelled today to Derby enjoying that moment 15 minutes on the clock Rangers enjoying the one goal advantage at the moment as Stuart McCall ushers the ball back to Andy Gorham. The goal is showing that not only Ronald Vatterus is pretty accurate when he comes to passing the ball out, a game of keep ball for Rangers right now. Picking it up in midfield again, loose headers, Waddle, angled ball there. McCoy takes it early, it's not far away. Good half volley from McCoy, Lee Camps, well positioned, dives to make the save. Look at that effort. Pace, accuracy. Rangers fans still think McCoist, a wonderful, wonderful Ranger. A legend at Ibrox, undoubtedly. Well, he has to be 355 goals. Sorry, 355 goals for Rangers, yeah. It's hard to imagine in 581 games. However, it's Derby on the attack now. Michael White, he links up with Rowett. Delivered to the back post. Oh, it's headed in the air. It's all David McKinnon can manage. It might break here kindly, and that's the equaliser. Well, Nigel Clough, a predator throughout his career, now the manager of Burton Athletic, just down the road here in the conference. 
neighbours of Derby County. Pounces on the loose ball, hooks the ball home. Stuart McCall and De Gorham not happy, but you can't argue with the quality of finish. Four minutes after opening the scoring, Rangers find themselves back on level terms of the goal of Gordon Judy cancelled out by Nigel Clough. Again, Rangers have some defending to do. Stuart McCall hemmed in in the right back area. The sun comes out at Derby. Pleased to see it. Rangers fans enjoying their day in the sun. Oh, clever stuff from Stuart McCall. Looking forward to a return to the Premiership next season. And on the bench, everyone enjoying the qualities on display here today. The legs may not just be as quick as they were when they were all playing regular first team football. They're up top. They've not lost any of the sharpness. McCall just combines with Dave McKinnon. McCoy's come short to peel off and just... Well, good defending from Derby County though. Oh, Rangers have bodies forward. Oh, fine through ball. Pierce takes the pass from Iranio. He goes one and one with Andy Gorham. He provides a super finish. A cool finish from the Man City manager. Andy Gorham pretty helpless. There was no offside flag. Nigel Spackman has a double take at the assistant, not happy with the decision, but my goodness, there he is, Stuart Pearce, psycho they call him, resplendent in his red boots, gives Derby County the lead, acknowledges the through ball from the Italian internationalist, Iranio, Mark Haightley says, come on, either he's talking about his fishing exploits at the weekend, or a suggestion of a three foot minimum offside decision that just didn't come. So Rangers have turned a one goal advantage into a one goal deficit. Can they get back prior to half time? Spackman inside and it's McKinnon in an advanced position, links up with McCoy, lofts it forward. Again the flag's there. Ali McCoy just stayed goal side when the through ball was there. This time the flag that we were looking for against the Derby County side didn't happen. I just hope that's water that uh, certain Ted McMinn's delivering. It might be to uh, dilute something that's hidden under the chair anyway. Iranio again looks such a cultured player, still only 39 years of age. Now Rowett, Goddard with a step over, Saunders with a layoff, Iranio holds it up for Derby County. Now Saunders might think of the shot here, it's not far away in fact to goalkeeper. Andy Gorham takes no chances, his angles were good, just not quite convinced it was going beyond the target. Alex to take a touch as Mark Haightley just still bemoaning that goal that was lost because no offside flag. I think Chris Wood says, come on, we've heard that a hundred times. So Rangers again coming forward through Ray Wilkins. This is better from Rangers, good passing move. The goal scorer Jury now peeling off to the flank. Back inside to Ian Ferguson, through ball for Ali McCoy, they made that art form over the years. Again, McCoy just caught with the ball about his feet. The halftime whistle blows at the Pride Park Stadium here in Derby. An entertaining first 45. Chris Waddle goes off. Ali McCoy goes off. Ian Ferguson coming all the way from Australia. But the first goal was down to Gordon Jury. Well, Gordon Jury does it well. And today was no exception. Rangers looking for the opener. Chris Waddle corner into the danger area. Keeper Camps can get a punch on it. Dave McKinnon, aware of the goalkeeper's positioning, heads it back into the danger area. And Gordon Dury stoops to head the ball between two Derby County defenders and give Rangers the opening goal this afternoon. Fine start. At the other end, though, Derby very determined to get back into the match. Dave McKinnon doesn't clear. It might just fall handily here for Nigel Clough. Good technique. Gets his body and angle right. Gets a good, clean connection with the ball and buries it behind Gorham. The second for Derby, suggestions of offside. Stuart Pearce didn't wait in the whistle, looked up, picked his spot and stroked the ball home, giving Derby County the half-time advantage. But try telling that to the Rangers fans. They've enjoyed it, that's for sure. And even a pipe band, just for good measure. Andy Gorham just says, I can't believe it. He was, well, halfway down the East Midlands offside. However, they've just got to pick themselves up and get on with it. It is a team of winners, of course. Remember the names who started the match. We may well see the introduction 
from the bench of other great Rangers players of the past. The fans still enjoying the moment. They might be slightly behind at the moment, but enjoying the football nonetheless. Chris Woods just waiting on his chance. Chat with former coach David Dodds. Rowett now inside to Saunders, who's just come short. Iranio now try to invite Rangers to come forward, break down a communication between Wilkins and Ian Ferguson. Darby again look to play the incisive pass, splits the defender, Stuart McCall drops a gear, it's a cut back here, chance for Saunders, he rolls into the path there, well, Goddard didn't stand in ceremony, knocks the ball home, in fact it's Bob Davidson, not Bob of Rangers reserve fame, Bobby Davidson, the first signing for Peter Taylor as Derby County manager back in 1982. Six yards out, Andy Gorham stranded, Bob A. Davidson. Makes it 3 1. Are Rangers out of this match? I think not. Defending again, though. A oh, step over from Pierce. Bobby Davidson tries to get his shot on target, but it's straight into the breadbasket of Andy Gorham. Yeah, give it some large on the drums. Andy Gorham said enough. He was on the bench for Avery in the first division this season. I think uh, Andy may well be the oldest living goalie still to be playing top flight football. If you're going to replace a legend, you have to do it with another. And just watch the agility yet of Chris Woods, a hero in his time at Ibrox. And now still coaching the goalkeepers for David Moyes' Everton in the Premiership. But Rangers two goals down at the moment, have it all to do. And they forage for it through McInnes. Jury again from distance, gets a good drive and it's not far away. Ali McCoist is ever looking for a touch from the goalkeeper. Jury already on target today, looking to add to his tally. Good clean strike, fully 25 yards, and it just whistles beyond the upright of goalkeeper camps. Uh, Wilkins, we haven't seen an awful lot of movement from Ray Wilkins today and he's caught in possession yet again. There's a through ball again, Rangers. Oh, Chris Woods. Watched it, the effort was pretty true. The Rangers fans acknowledge the save from Chris Woods. One of Terry Butcher and uh, Graham Roberts of well, the English contingent that made such a big impression when Graham Soonis took over the mantle at Ibrox. Another Englishman, chips the ball forward, there's a chance. Oh, it's, well, it seemed to take an eternity to go over the line. The delivery was accurate, and there was that man, McCoy, doing what Ali McCoy does best. Chris Waddle with the delivery. McCoy first touches, well, just to get it in goal. That's all he aims for. The goalkeeper, perhaps expecting a cleaner strike, goes to ground early, and the ball literally trundles beyond him. As Ali McCoy just has a word with Stuart Pearce in the passing. It's game on, I suggest, Derby County 3. Rangers 2. Waddle again plays it early. Looks for McCoist. Just needs help to win. Indeed it is. It's into the path of McCoist. He's in the box. He lifts it over the goalkeeper, but unfortunately in this occasion, just lifts it over the crossbar at the same time. Good sweeping move from Rangers. Ian Ferguson just helps it into the path of Ali McCoist. He thought he had notched his second in this occasion, just over the crossbar. A good turn again from Davidson. A good defending though from Nigel Spackman. Just stands in the ball at the awkward moment. Fortunately, Stuart McCall handily placed to pick up the loose ball. Chris Waddle now happy to orchestrate things from midfield. Short ball from McCoy again. Wilkins takes the square pass. Oh, he threads a great ball from McCoy again. He's made a great run in the goalkeeper. This time. Makes the fine save. Rangers coming short. Ian Ferguson linking up with Ray Wilkins. McCoy's on his bike for the early ball and he gets it just where he wants it. Angles the shot goalward and Leo Camps narrows that angle as we are reminded that Rangers did indeed get nine in a row. 72 minutes. Derby County 3 or Rangers 11 2. We have 18 minutes to see if this Rangers legend 11 can get back on level terms. Special guest today, Chris Waddle again plays the forward pass. Again, McCoy's on target. Ian Ferguson this time looking for any slips. Archie Knox and Walter Smith 
maybe a wee bit grey around the gills than they were in their time at Ibrox, but we'll be happy with the performance of this side second half. It's rolled into the path again, the inventive back healer Gordon Jury. Oh, wonderful goal. Wonderful goal from Rangers. Gets the light blues back on level terms. The strike partnership of McCoist. An assist from Ian Ferguson with the back heel. Comes to Rangers aid again and the players enjoyed that one. Great movement from Rangers. David Dodge just congratulates Gordon Jury. Takes the acknowledgement from the fans. Rangers now back on level terms. It's Derby 3, Rangers 3. Can we get a winner prior to full time? Delivery into the box again. There's another chance. Take a touch, take another chance. Oh, and the goalkeeper makes a great save. It was the tinfoil boy with the effort. Son of Kevin McMinn. Kevin McMinn Jr. Almost making a name for himself in the Rangers Legend 11. The young substitute, all alone, thought he was going to beat the goalkeeper. The old camps, no sense of fun at all, this goalkeeper. Stands tall, makes a save. Now, Judy looking for the hat trick. He'll have to do better than that, though. Suggesting a bit of a bobble on the Pride Park surface. The youngsters may not remember Jury at his prime, but they're enjoying the skills of the man they call Jukebox today. Equally, Waddle's through balls have been wonderfully entertaining to date, although this one goes astray. Rangers defending higher up the park than they did earlier, get the reward. Squeeze through again, this time surely the winner! Not to be. Oh, absolutely heartbreak for Rangers. It looked as if we had the fourth goal that would decide that Rangers would go back with a victory. Ian Ferguson, he's made such a long journey, he would have enjoyed that one. 45 goals in his Rangers career, almost making it 46. But his passing has been on the ball today if his finishing hasn't. Rangers now going for the jugular, shot on target again. Camps has been such a busy goalkeeper since replacing Peter Shilton. Coist again, knows what he wants, cuts inside Mark Wright, the drive's on target, but Camps just stretches out the foot to save, five minutes remaining, at Pride Park, Stuart McCall, Kevin McMahon Jr. again, thinks about a shot from there, he just wanted to concentrate on hitting the target, if his dad wasn't able to play, well, Kevin Jr. has certainly not disgraced Rangers like Blue Jersey today, now Darby come forward again, 3-3, the game finally balanced as injury time perhaps beckons. Indeed, it's all over at Pride Park. It's certainly a fitting tribute to Kevin McMinn, the man affectionately known by both sets of fans as Ted, or indeed the Tin Man. Some fans come onto the park to acknowledge the heroes of past and indeed present. Gordon Jury with two goals today. He enjoyed a return to the Blue Jersey, but the fans in the Derby sunshine have certainly enjoyed it. Rangers open the scoring. The goalkeeper gets a touch on it, inventive return from Dave McKinnon and Gordon Jury heads home from inside the six yard box. However the lead didn't last that long and Darby go to the other end. Good delivery hung up in the air, McKinnon again with a header this time in his own box. The ball breaks for Nigel Clough and he hooks the ball behind Andy Gorham. Gorham suggesting that Stuart McCall could have got a touch, it's academic anyway. This the through ball, no offside flag, Iranio with a pass. Pierce left one and one with Andy Gorham and with the outside of that sweet left peg just strokes the ball home. Darby enjoying the lead, not happy with a one goal advantage, actually make it two goals to the good. Bob Davison with the finish making it Darby three Rangers one but this Rangers team just wouldn't lie down and McCoist, well he's just got to be on the score sheet hasn't he? Fine delivery, McCoist not the best of finishes but it counts nonetheless. Now, possibly the goal of the game, the best passing move of the game, McInnes finds McCoyce, helped on to Fergie. Fergie with the back healer, Gordon Jury says, thank you very much. Well, here endeth the scoring, a great day for Ted McMinn, a fitting tribute for a super lad. You know, it was just the last few days and the phone's been ringing, McCoyce is like phoning you up and saying, you'll never guess. And when he starts saying that, you think he's going to say, I've, I've double booked and Tommy Johnson done it today, this, this morning and all. And, it just you're, in, you're on edge all the time and that's the one thing I think as soon as that whistle blew the day that I thought or even seeing the players in the dressing room I thought right we've got two teams here the lads have no I don't think they've been beat the 9-0 team and they're bragging about it 
I never told the Derby lads that, um, but if I had told them, I think they would have um, maybe been a wee bit wound up. But for two players, by with his score, Nigel Clough scoring, Stuart Pearce scoring, two Forest lads. So at the end of the day, I think the Derby fans showed a great uh, spirit there for the Forest lads. You know, because it kind of be easy for them to come here because I wouldn't go down the road. So it was um, it's a great day, and I think the fans, the fans, the Rangers fans made it again. Because you know what, they actually, they think the Derby fans was trying to out-sing them, but I don't think I'll ever out-sing Rangers fans, never. What a tribute to you. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? I think the, the one nice thing is it's 22 years uh, since I signed the Rangers, and um, that, that's the one thing that people say, well, 22 years ago this man played for played for Rangers, and people still talk about him. They say bad things, they say, say good things, but um, that's life. I've been called worse in my life, and I'm lucky enough to play played with the best, the best club in the world, so... And I think I'm probably more popular now with half a leg, half a, half a leg less than I was when I had two good legs. Because at least now, by the way, I can if I fall over, I've got an excuse, and I've when I got half a leg. Your son came on towards the end. That was a nice touch. I think he enjoyed yeah. the whole experience. Yeah, put a f fantastic ball in the box. But I don't know who's, where he got that from. And that shot at the end, I was dreading if that went in because I was just terrified if that went in, he would never hear the end of it for for the rest of my life. So. I'm glad, but I'm, he enjoyed it. He came off with his granddad's a big, big blue nose, uh, and he's came off, and I think his his grand, his grand man, grandpa are over the moon that he's he's lucky enough to come on here because there's not a lot of kids 16 of playing in front of 33 and a half thousand fans. What's the plan now then? I don't know, and that's a worrying thing. People have said to me because you, you've not had a down downside at uh, your, your operation, so because I've had too much to think about, so. I just hopefully now that I can next another project might come up and I can get on with that and the bike ride next year, but that's a long far away. So I'm, I'm, I don't. I just look on it like I want to get back into football in some way. I don't know what, but I want to. That the day made me. I, mean, I can't play it again, but there was just a buzz the day again that, that thinks I wish I could play. And um, seeing them players coming out today and, and the reaction for the fans, it just gives you that. I don't know. Might be in the Paralympics and. 2012 or something like that, you never know. You've got that hunger back though. I have, but I, I never ever lost it. You see, even when I play golf and whatever I play, I'm always wanting to win. And I just the day that, the crowd today, I was just thinking of sitting there looking at players and I'm thinking, I wish I was out there. First things first though, perhaps a quick liquid refreshment? Yeah, I've, I've no it for two days and I'm starving and I'm dying for a cold bottle of Budweiser and I know up there the fridges don't work, so I might have to go to my local for one. Well done today, Ted. Thanks so much, lads.